It's what every athlete needs at the end of a gruelling sporting event. Mm, you get used to this. A massage. Couldn't think of a better way to spend the day, really, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Attitude reckon Kiwi track star Kate Horan deserved a bit of pampering. She came away from the IWAS Games in Taipei with a bronze medal and a world record. Where do you ache most after a big race, Kate? My legs ache, um, mainly my good leg. Just aches because it takes so much of the forces when I'm running. The Taiwan event was a successful test run for all the Kiwi athletes. 580 athletes have converged on Taipei for the IWAS Games. That's the International Wheelchair and Amputee Games. New Zealand sent four athletes here, a power lifter, two swimmers and one track athlete. Our two swimmers, Cameron Leslie and Sophie Pascoe, are teenagers with potential. They both attended the World Champs last year, recording times that captured the attention of Paralympics New Zealand, or PNZ. But they've got to prove themselves here. Sophie's a newbie on the international scene. This is only her second major international competition but she's heading into this event ranked third in the world. Hard training, about eight times a week with two gym sessions. I think it's just to go out there and do my best, 100%, and coming out with hopefully a gold medal. In the 200 metre medley, Sophie dominates the field. Check out the race end. No other swimmers in sight. Your thoughts on this next race, she's going to kick ass? Big time. An hour later, she repeats her performance in the 100 metre breaststroke. Her efforts, winning four gold medals from four events, prove that she's a girl to watch. I had a lot of confidence in those two races, so I had to make sure they were pretty strong races, but I didn't have much competition, which was pretty gutting, but I still went out there and did my best to do a PB. I make your experience worthwhile to lead up to Beijing. I just want to point something out. Just behind me is the Broadcasting Centre. Now, out of 44 countries, Attitude has the only TV crew here. And I'm the only reporter. Swimmer Cameron Leslie's also an aspiring wheelchair rugby player. With his well-developed upper torso, I'd rather he was joining me as a member of the Wheel Blacks. So Cameron, what are you, mate? A swimmer or a rugby player? Swimmer, definitely. Why is that? Uh, I've just got to, I don't know, I've been doing it for so long, it's more of a chance to go to Beijing and more of a chance to medal and 200 free was, it was a good time or not bad time, but my goggles fell off on my dive so that was off-putting right from the start, but I did well to come back from it. Today Cameron's racing in the 150 metre medley and the butterfly. Because Beijing's just around the corner so it is, you know, you are pushing yourself a lot harder to do personal best and get, get faster and actually get selected. The goal was to medal and to push my case to be a Beijing, Beijing swimmer. Just making sure I've got my technique sorted and just make sure I've got the good momentum going. He achieved his goal of recording personal best times and gave his competition something to think about. Oh, when I was doing the 100 freestyle, I, the dude, one, the dude next to me was beating me coming into the turn. I tumble turned and I beat him within 15 metres of the turn and then some dude two lanes over tried to outpace me. I was, get out of my house and beat him. What's the name? Curtis. Curtis, yeah. hey. from Blackwind. Hiya, how are you? Yeah. I know you went. Yeah? Okay. You're swimming? Yeah. Good luck. Thank you. Okay. Not all Paralympic countries are funded as well as us, as you can see by this guy's wheelchair. But look at our new friend Raj swim. India's only been competing in Paralympic sport for six years. The team's goal is 12 medals here in Taipei. They've already got 10. Raj Vendra hopes to swim the English Channel one day. When they come out, their, out of their houses and they take part in sports, when they, uh, when they win laurels for their country, naturally public come to know about them. And then they become the part of our society. Across town, an hour to the south of Taipei City, is the track and field venue. Inside the stadium, Kate Horan's warming up. She broke the world 400 metre record in Athens. It's been broken by American April Holmes since then, 
and Kate's now shifted her focus to the 200 metres and 100 metres for Beijing. The temperature's 38 degrees and the air is thick with smog, exactly the sort of conditions they'll face in Beijing next year. Jeff Goddard is here from the New Zealand Limb Board. He's got one eye on Kate, making sure she's able to perform well. The other eye is checking out the other girl's legs professionally. So you're a bit of a secret service agent trying to get information out of the other athletes? Yeah, well something like that. They sent me over here from New Zealand to do a bit of a reconnaissance, to have a look at the, um, the limbs, what other athletes are wearing from around the world. And um, it's been quite good because a lot of the athletes are quite open and prepared to have a chat and talk about their prosthesis. And they don't give away too much, but they do give away some helpful hints, which they're sharing, sharing information with, with each other, which is really, really great. The limb technology has improved in a lot of um, areas of the prosthesis. People have refined them and um, worked out that they're able to get them to perform better with different alignments and with um, possible testings of pressures and, and um, forces exerted on the prosthesis. But now they have, for me, it works perfectly. They have a very handy vacuum system, so uh, I, I, I can really run very comfortable without having the fear of losing my leg or something. It falls out, uh, even when it's weather like this. Kate's coach is Alan Colston. It's the first international event he's accompanied her to. Kate's been troubled by pain from her prosthetic limb and an injury leading up to the event. Today, it's the 200 metre heat. The IWAS Games covered five days, a long time to maintain such an intense level of focus. There was pressure to perform. I have been nervous for the last five days. Five days of competition is the um, longest I've ever had to compete, sort of day after day. Um, and the adrenaline, every morning you wake up with butterflies in your stomach. So I was like, oh god, didn't know how it was going to go, but um, felt really good. The result? Uh, second fastest qualifier, which um, was a bit of a surprise and something I'm quite pleased with, yeah. We've come here to sort of look at what it's going to be like for Kate in Beijing, uh, what sort of issues she'll have in terms of her warm up, um, climatising to the heat. Um, and we've certainly learnt, for instance, that um, today she probably warmed up 15 minutes longer than she needed to. So she was hanging around a little bit and it got very, very hot out there, so. Kate took the bronze medal in the 200 metre final. The 400 metres is Kate's favourite event, but she wasn't scheduled to race. As the new day dawned, she was feeling pumped and decided to give it a crack. Having not run a 400 metre in a, a 400 metre race in a year, I really didn't know what I could do and where I was at. Had gone through the race plan with my coach the night before, so sort of gingerly stepped out onto the track thinking, right, I know it's going to hurt, but I'm just going to give it everything. Go Katie! 55.99 seconds Go later, Katie! she had a world record. Yeah. And I remember about a metre out from the finish line, I, I sort of stopped to look to think, do I need to just charge to that finish line? But um, luckily I didn't and they were a fair way back. So that was fantastic. So I crossed that line knowing I'd won gold but I think it was when I was sitting on the track and I looked up at that time and I looked and I thought, my goodness, you know, that, that's a world record time. Um, of course, I had to wait till it was confirmed, but um, it was really, really exciting for me. Paralympics New Zealand had viewed this event as a major warm-up session for the Paralympics in Beijing. In terms of performance, pretty impressive effort, team.